Hey there, it's William from Boxer 2 Valve, and today we're going to be working on the gearbox, one of many components that we've taken off of the R80 that we're going to kind of go through a bit at a time and reinstall on the motorcycle. So this gearbox is basically the same from 1981 onward. It, there was really no significant changes. The only change is a different output shaft seal on the paralever models, but essentially in the... Uh, in terms of construction and what it is, it's from, it is that 81 to 80 to 95, basically. And so I luckily was able to get one of these BMW engine stands some years ago and modified it to work with my table. I took, put a couple bearings in there so that it can spin around and that makes it, and, it, and I uh, made this little disc here with some locating pins and that works really well for me to be able to move the gearbox around and also it pivots on this axis. Now you're probably not, maybe not going to have something as cool as this, but you might have to work on it on a bench. But it's, it's no big deal. This is just a nice little thing to have, but you can do it on a workbench. First thing I'm going to do is, is remove the, the shifter mechanism. Just pull straight out. And you see how that works is it, it basically has a corresponding profile inside there that locates that positively. So not much to worry about indexing on that. Okay, to take one of these apart, you really do need some special tools or it needs to be pretty creative in improvising it. This is the tool that you need for removing the output flange. I don't have a good alternative other than this particular tool for BMW at the moment. And so this has two purposes. First thing we're going to do is use it to loosen the nut. So you need to hold the output flange stationary while you loosen the nut in there. Okay, so now a bar is inserted in there to hold that still, like so. And then you need a 24 millimeter socket that'll fit right inside like so and they're pretty tight. So a pretty good sized breaker bar is a nice thing to have. And I actually like to put a piece of tubing on here as well. So I can actually get sort of set up to break that thing loose. There we go. Okay, so that's step one, loosening the nut. This tool comes back off again. And there's a little washer, wave washer in here. I'll get that out of there too. Now, the, this is the hard part. Oh, this thing just fell right off. Look at that. Did you see that? That just came out. I was getting ready to show you how this tool works and that thing just came right out of there. That is weird. It's not supposed to happen. I've never had that happen to me ever. So we'll see what the deal is with that. But normally what you would do is you would need a puller to remove that. And the way that would work is this is the rest of the tool here. Fits like so. Bolts back into place just like before. And then you would turn this with a wrench and it would pop off like that. But in this case, um, this thing was loose, so that's wild. That could have actually, theoretically, spun. But we'll see, that's, I'm kind of blown away about that. But anyway, okay, so now the output flange is off of there. And the next thing we need to do is remove all of these bolts. Okay, now we need to remove this cover. And for that, you need another tool. It's best. Um, 
you, I suppose it's possible to hit it and strategically maybe take it up, but it's certainly not a good idea. Here's what you're really dealing with. Here's the cover as it looks. Here's what's going on inside. You've got obviously a bearing here, here, and here. Now this hole here is that hole there. So basically you see that one's kind of in the middle. And so the way it's designed is that we apply pressure to this bearing and it lifts them all off. So we need to also heat the cover a little bit with a heat gun. And so as you can see, the, the area that is really needed to be heated is right around this bearing here, here, and then the third one is here. So you have to kind of like concentrate your heat on this side. There's not much going on over on this side. The, the, the difficulty in removing the cover is, is um, getting this warm enough so that it expands enough to lift easily off of the bearings and not do any damage. So this is the way that the tool looks. It fits right in there like so, and it has a little foot on it that goes on to the bearing surface, fits on like, like this, and then you put this shaft through there, could be a bolt or whatever, goes through, and then we tighten this, and then it'll lift right off. Now you can make something like that. Here's one that I made some years ago, and as you can see, it's kind of crude, but it does the same thing. I just basically, a real easy lathe project and some pretty sloppy welds, but it, it totally works. And so, you know, you can kind of size it up and now you know what the thing looks like. You can actually make something like this pretty easily or maybe somebody you know can make it for you. So next thing I'll do now is just sort of heat the cover up a bit, get it a little bit nice and warm. Okay, that should be warm enough. Now I'm gonna just apply a little bit of pressure onto this tool. You don't wanna force it no matter what you do. Just easy goes, a couple little taps as you apply pressure. And you see, you just kind of work with the cover right up like that. There we go. It's a little warm. There I have it. And so that is how, that's how that tool works to pull the cover off of there. And it's pretty easy to do once you have a tool like that. So now keep in mind, there's some shims in here. This is all for the, for the end float. What you can do is you can go ahead and put the shims in where they belong, but you're gonna need to re-shim it anyway. We'll get to that part of it all later. But this is a good way to just remember, for example, that this shim, this, this plate go, went here. It's where it's going to go, just so you, you, know, you can kind of keep track of things. And that's that. So I want to set that aside and make lots of notes, take lots of pictures so you know where everything, how everything came apart. All right, I was just going to start by removing the gasket, just get it out of the way. Okay, so here we have it, the, the inside of the five-speed gearbox. This is the shift mechanism. And I'm going to go ahead and begin by removing that. These are the two bolts that we'll need to remove to take the shift mechanism out. Okay, so now that the shift mechanism is loose, I can now, this is rod here that you can pull out for the shift forks. And then you can dislodge the shift forks a little bit better so that you can then remove the shift mechanism in its entirety. There you go, that comes out like that. So this is the, the shift mechanism. This is the later version. If you ever have a chance to look at an earlier five speed, the profile here is not so sharp. It's a little more rounded. They made this improvement to, to improve the gearshift quality 
it snaps into gear in these, you know, basically as, it, as you shift gears, this is neutral. First gear, neutral. Second, third, fourth, fifth. So that's what's going on inside your gearbox as you go through the gears. And then at the same time, what's happening is these channels are moving as this moves and they are affecting the shift forks and moving the, the gears back and forth. So that's in a nutshell how it works. We'll look at that more in detail as it goes back together again. Okay, you can see here how the shift forks are set up. There's one shift fork here. They can be removed. They were in place like that. Put the shaft back in. Keep it like that. Okay, the next thing we need to do now is heat up the bottom of the case. So let's look at what's going on there. Here's, here's a, a case, which by the way, this has been all vapor blasted and it looks like brand new. This will look like that too when we get done. So what we're gonna do is heat this area here where the three bear, where the bearings are, mainly in these two, because the, the input shaft bearing, as you see, that comes out in a little bit different way. It's a different type of bearing. We'll, we'll get to that. We're going to concentrate our heat on these two mounds here on this gearbox. So I could turn the gearbox upside down. This tool would allow me to do it, but I'm not. And the reason is I don't want this stuff just to fall out uncontrolled. So this way, everything's just horizontal. It'll just chill there while I heat up those points that I showed to you a moment ago on that other gearbox tire. Okay, once it's hot enough, you should be able to lift these shafts right out of the housing. So this one's nice and loose, this one too, but once in a while on this output shaft, so I found that they, they can be a little stubborn, a little heel bar, something like that, just to put a little bit of persuasion behind it. Okay, now first the input shaft can come out easy enough. And then just gonna give it one little help there. Now these two gears can come out together and the shift fork's gonna be with it too, so be mindful of that. And that's exactly how it's gonna go back together again. You're gonna to have to hold them together, two shafts, with the shift fork in place and put it all back in one go after the case is heated enough. So for right now, we'll just set these aside. So now with the shafts out, you can kind of see what, we, what we're left with. There's a couple of shims here. I want to take those out of the picture. Make sure that they go back in when you put it back together again. I'm just gonna grab that one with a knife. There we go. And then the case is still pretty hot right now and I want to get that uh, input shaft bearing out of there. So I'm gonna turn it around. And this is a pretty good time to get that seal out of there. So using a seal puller, Popping the seal out of there carefully. Okay, so it's good to heat the case up a bit, just like I did. Sometimes the bearing will fall out on its own weight. Sometimes it needs a little bit of help. If in this case, it's asking for some help. So we'll put the a little suitable bearing driver in there and give that a tap. And it will come out without much effort at all. There you go. So there we've got the input shaft bearing, which is, as you can see, a cylindrical roller bearing. And the, other, the rest of the bearings are all ball bearings. So now we've got this pretty well all apart. Last thing I want to do is knock these bolts out because they're a tight, they're like a press fit in there. So now's a good time to do that as well. 
It's not gonna take much to get these bolts out, but I'm using a brass drift to make sure I don't mushroom the bolts at all. I just kind of tap them through. Got a pan down there to catch them. Bam, and see if we can be that precise on the next one. Cool, all righty. Now comes the time to clean. Let's have a look at this case. It's kind of got some corrosion. Um, it's not too bad, but we're gonna make it look like new in our vapor blaster. So I need to do that. And same with the cover. We're gonna get that all nice and clean and everything. So that will come back to all that. But in the meantime, let's get started on preparing all the shafts, replacing all the bearings, preparing for reassembly already now. Let's move over into that phase of it right now. So here are the main components that we're gonna be dealing with right now, and that is we're gonna be changing out these bearings and inspecting the gears and all sorts of things, and dealing with the shift mechanism. And I've went and grabbed a few parts that we're gonna need. These are parts that we sell. This is a complete bearing kit, comes with all six bearings, really top quality bearings um, all in one, so you don't have to worry about getting the wrong ones. We're also gonna be needing this. This is a complete gasket kit. This is something that we also offer, it has all the seal rings and, and um, gaskets that you need when going through a gearbox like this. Also gonna actually put a taller fifth gear in this one because uh, it's actually a nice upgrade for the gearbox. And we're gonna change out the neutral switch because they always leak. The one came out of it kind of looks a little leaky, so we'll be changing that out. Got a few parts and some clips and things like that. So gonna, the spring, I'm gonna go start, gonna start with this actually, the shift mechanism and look at that. Okay, there's two, two major things. There's not really much to this shift mechanism. Everything seems to be in pretty good condition. There's not like a whole lot of stuff we have to do, but there are two things that um, I like to do. First of all, this little, nylon roller is a pretty important part. That's really what's where the, the detent works. Now, you can see it's kind of off-centered. These things get kind of worn. A really cool upgrade is to replace that roller with a, with a ball bearing. I mean, this is super awesome. It just is gonna replace that. And, and so instead of any it, getting wallowed out or anything, it's like a really solid, positive, easy gliding, it really improves the shift quality quite a bit. The other thing we're gonna to wanna to do is change out this spring right here on the shift pawl. And this is a pretty important part too because these do have a tendency of breaking. You can see in comparison to these other springs in the gearbox, they're pretty heavy duty. This is a pretty lightweight spring because it has to fit in this rather, rather small clearance. So we're gonna take it apart so we can kind of see how it all works. So first thing I'll do is remove this circlip here. Now, very important is that you look at the teeth, how they're indexed. Now in first gear, I'm in this hole here. So pay attention right here. You could be off a tooth and the gearbox will sort of shift, but it kind of won't. And um, so it's really important that that first tooth go in there just like that. You could easily do it like that and that would, be, that would mess everything up. It has to be like that. So even take a picture, remember that. clip out. I'm just going to sort of push this spring over this clip that's there. Like that. And now this part can come out. After 
just like so. You just leave that spring there. Okay, now here's the shift pull spring. There it is. So what this does is it holds tension on the shift mechanism. It makes contact with these little rollers here, these little pins, and it changes the position of the cam, which in turn changes the position of the shift forks and all that. So what happens sometimes is that spring breaks. And when it breaks, it effectively, this is what happens. It just falls down like that. The spring holds it up as a ratcheting mechanism. It, as, it, as you shift gears, you see this is connected directly to the shifter right here. That's that, those are those two flats that when we took the, uh, the, um, the shift arm off, that's what that engages in. And this spring holds this shift pawl up so that it can make contact with the gears. So when that falls down, whatever gear you're in, you're stuck in. And um, we have a video about this. There's a reference to it here. But um, check out the gear shifter tool that we offer. And it's a really neat tool. And what it is is that if that ever happens to you, that spring breaks, is that you can, in a nutshell, you can take the uh, filler plug out of the gearbox, put this tool in following the included instructions, and you can actually move that piece up mechanically with that tool and shift it into a gear that's usable so you can at least make it home or to a safe place. Um, so that's on our website, check that out. Let's back to this again. So now we're gonna, gonna want to go ahead and change that spring out whenever I have a gearbox apart, just because. It has a certain lifespan and while we're in there, we, we don't know where it's at in that lifespan, but we're gonna go ahead and change it. So it's easy enough to do. Keep in mind with these little clips, okay, maybe in a perfect world, you should probably replace all the clips, but in some, in some cases, absolutely you want to replace them all, but sometimes you can, in my opinion, get, kind of get away with still using these clips as long as they snap on well. And it's not a super critical application. This one really came off nice and it, it, it's going on hard. It, really snaps in, I'm gonna use it. But keep in mind that they have a sharp edge and a rounded edge because of the way they're manufactured. So always the sharp edge out. If the clip, this clip feels loose in any way, absolutely replace it. Okay, then we just gotta put this back into position. There we have it. So then this has to go like together like this. Make sure that spring is down all the way press against the spring tension. Note the position here. And then just help the spring over that clip, like that. Push it in all the way and reinstall the circlip right there. And make sure that's securely seated. That's good. Okay, now let's get on to this part here. This is a kind of a weird clip. It's a difficult one to get most snap ring pliers into. In fact, sometimes I'll use, a, a, what I do is use the external clip pliers because they'll fit in there and then spread it with that kind of a little bit tedious, but it works. Then lift that, don't spread it any more than you have to. There it goes, came right off, all right. See, it's not even, if you look at it carefully, you can see it's kind of egg-shaped in a way or whatever, it's the hole's not in the center anymore definitely has been holding back the shifting performance 
of this gearbox. This is a way better part right there. So we're gonna go with that. Okay. Alrighty, so now we can go ahead and put these parts all back together again. Okay, back to first gear like we started. And back to the way it came apart. There we go. You can actually see as we roll, you can, if you look really carefully, you can see that roller bearing actually rolling. So it's going to be good shift in gearbox. Okay, so that's that. Let's get rid of these parts. Now we're going to get into the gears. For replacing the bearings on, on, the, on this or any of the gearbox, you're going to need some special tools. And what works really well is the Kuko puller or the, just like the original tools that uh, BMW sells to the, their dealers. And this is a very good set to have. So I'm going to show you how we can do this, how we can take this all apart and stuff. Okay, so let's start with the input shaft. This just comes apart. Now there are two things we're going to need to do on this. One is to replace this bearing here. There's a circlip in here, which I've already got ready to install. We'll replace that. And then we want to look very carefully at this, the teeth here on this gear. This is where all the power is transmitted through the engine. This is so the input shaft, so this is the center of the clutch. And this, all the power transmits through this, this set of gears here, like that. So these are the ones that are most commonly beat up. And considering the, the um, shape of a lot of other components on this bike, I'm surprised that this one looks really pretty good. So we can go ahead and reuse it. Just going to be changing out the bearings. So Kuko puller. Okay, so on this on this particular bearing, there's a there's a there's a sleeve here that we can actually go ahead and pull that off with it to start with. So I'm going to get in there pretty tight on there. Okay, there's a seal ring in the center of the shaft that we're going to be replacing later on. So I can go ahead and get that out now or any other time. And they're kind of a bugger to get out. You have, what I do is I just sort of squish it from the side. Once you get it kind of mashed down, then there's actually going to be something you can get in there to pry it against. So like that, I kind of smashed it down to loosen it and then it comes out. Not, not the most elegant removal, but it works. Okay, now we take the cuckoo puller, the rest of it. So I'm, the tip of the, of the pull, puller is pretty sharp. 
Um, and it's going to be, this is, the hole's pretty big, so I'm just going to drop a, a M8 Allen bolt in there and push against that. That works fine. There we go. See, it's all set up and ready to go. Just about. Here it comes. So there we go. We've got the first bearing off of there. And the reason I did it that way is because if you put the puller um, on here, you might, it's, you, you, it's a very small edge that you can grab onto and you might bend that ring. So it's better to do it that way. Now it's relatively easy to push this out, have more control over it in a way. I can put it in the press and get that out of there in a bit. Now this has to be compressed in order to remove that snap ring. So here's another cool thing about the Kuko puller. Okay, here's basically the way I've got this tool set up now. This is the other way around. This is gonna fit in here, so we, it's on, gonna work on compression. And then I've got a little tool you can make something or come up with something similar to this that'll fit inside there, give us something good to push on. And then now just gonna kind of bring all the screws evenly together. And line that up so that the, the snap ring's exposed. So now when I, as I tighten the puller, I'm pushing the spring together. And now you can see how that snap ring is exposed completely. I've got the tool set up, I've got this clip exposed, and rather than wrestle around with it on the table, what's easier to do is just chuck the tool up into the vise like this. So it's nice and stationary. And now I can go about the task of removing that circ clip. Can be a pain in the butt. Okay, so here we have it. Great, now, simple enough, loosen the tool. So now with the clip out, this part can be removed. It just sort of slides on there, it can. And spring. And then this part here, the way this works, this gear, can turn freely on here, or it, it, and it's held back by, from turning by this part, but, and, and, and the spring holds it tight again. So this is like a, a, a cush drive. So when you bang a gear or something like that, or downshift inappropriately or whatever, this will take up a lot of that shock on that ramp. So as a course of that, you oftentimes see a, a lot of wear on these parts. This one, for example, does have quite a bit of scoring on it. And its counterpart here, not as bad, it took the brunt of it. So this part just slides right off like that. So we can look at it. Now this input shaft gear here, you can look at it, there's a couple of different versions this has, the later models have an X on them. And the, these are, I believe, 17.5 degree teeth. The earlier versions were 15 degrees. 
if I'm not mistaken, and that's, a, I think, the, the spec. But anyway, you want to kind of make sure that you look at what gear gears you have. If you're going to change um, any gears, you, if it has an X or not is a big, a big uh, thing to consider. There's information about that on our website, too. Now, this part, the last part here is, this is actually the inner race of that, of this bearing here. And it's pressed on the shaft, so we need to get it off of there. And the Kuko puller will do the trick. It will definitely do the trick if you put it on there and put this whole bridge system together and all that. But in, in this case, I'm going to use the press. It's just a whole lot easier to press that out of there. If you don't have a press, and you, you can totally do it with a Kuko puller. I've done it before. You can just go press this out. Right on. So that, I just pressed that off of there, and now we'll get the new bearing on, put this part back together again. Okay, there we go, new bearing. Okay, first, I'm, before I put this back together, I'm just going to clean off the splines really well in the solvent tank. Okay, so I'm just going to warm up this bearing race a little bit. I've got the input shaft cleaned, and the splines look pretty good on it, actually. And the part's good. We're going to run this. So I'm just using a Phillips screwdriver, and this shaft actually fits over, the, over it, so I'll get this thing pretty warm and then line it up, and it should just slide most of the way on. We'll give it a little help with the press, but it's always good putting bearings on to use a little heat than um, just pressing them cold. Just everybody's got their thoughts on that, I'm sure. Like so, loosen that and oh, yeah, went on a good part of the way. Now I'm just going to press it in the rest of the way. All right, there we go. So now this gear here, like I've already looked at it, I think it looks like it's in pretty good shape. And so I'm going to put that right back on. This one, on the other hand, I'm going to see if we have a replacement for that. It's just a little bit more wear than, than I would like to have this bike have. It's got some really worn spots on it. Okay, so we had a new one. It looks a lot, a lot better. So let's keep moving. That'll slide real nice there. and that part. Now we're just going to hook up that Kuko puller and install the new snap ring. The hardest part is getting that snap ring up onto this first step here. And you just have to kind of work it with a screwdriver. It's the best way I found until you get up there. Once you do, though, 
Now you've introduced a little gap there that wasn't there when you first started because it's pretty much all closed up, that ring. And now I've got these little pliers I've had for a long time that work pretty cool. They're basically piston ring pliers, but they work great for just getting in to spread. So if you have some snap ring pliers or something like that, that you can just spread it apart. And that helps you get it up over that next little lip. And at that point now, you're pretty well home free. You can just get a couple of screwdrivers or something and push it down into position. You get that nice solid snap into the groove. So always replace that part. Try not to bend it more than you have to. And if this looks like a big pain in the butt, you know, think about sending it to us, we'll do it for you. But it's fun. Some, it's not for everyone, but a lot of little steps in this. Okay. So now we've got that part done. Putting everything all back together again, bit by bit. Um, but that'll be another time. This is all we can do today. We've got a lot of stuff going on, so make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you won't miss any of the excitement as the motorcycle comes back together better than ever. And this is William from Boxer 2 Valve reminding you that you'll find links to a lot of the parts and tools that we discussed um, here below in the video as well as on our website. And we hope that you do visit us at boxer2valve.com and subscribe to our newsletter. Stay tuned for more episodes coming up. We're having a blast and we'll see you soon again.